Yo guys, what is up? Welcome back to more Zero Hour. Welcome back to another Pro 1v1 match. Today we are over on Dralim Desert. And down at the bottom left, we have none other than Vivid with the China Infantry in the green color. And today he is against, over this uh, little oasis, he is against the mighty Fargo. Over here with the GLA Tox with the yellow color. So, yeah, both players here today are not playing under their usual uh, names. Up at the top right, we have Mass uh, Prodo. What, what's he called? Production or something like that? No, wait. Prodigy. Some, something like that. But the rest of his name... No, wait, it wouldn't even make sense, would it, if it's Prodigy? I actually don't know what he is. But his name's cut off anyway. So, typically, when you when you make a Clan Wars account, you want to make a name that's actually going to fit. But yeah, he, uh, his name actually doesn't fit. We've got a truck rush here from Vivid, which is actually playing under the name um, CW Doge. Truck rush there fails, and the truck also over here goes down to the terrorist. Actually, quite a nice start there from Fargo so far. Got the stronger army here as well, so you're imagining he should be able to close this one out. But Vivid, obviously, very, very strong. And he's loading up his first outpost. Let's see how Fargo is going to deal with that. He's gone for a technical. A little bit risky in case there's a helix. But obviously, he might have an inkling that there's no helix. Is he gonna, yeah, he's going to make a quad next, actually. So, yeah, he could be. He, he is expecting it the way he spread those units out. But it is going to be a TNT through. And he's going to actually find the war factory. No helix. So he should be able to kill this. I'm pretty sure there's four terrorists inside of there. So he'll drop off three for the War Factory kill. Only three Toxin Terrorists required to take out that War Factory. And then behind this now, he could uh, find another Dozer or find a truck or something like that. Something Fargo often likes to do is actually bring that extra terrorist. I don't know if he's got a worker inside of there as well or an RPG. But currently he's just kind of chilling back there. First outpost has already made its way over to Fargo's base though. And already taking down the barracks, not before one more terrorist actually comes out, though. And has actually dropped off another terrorist back in the back in the base of Vivid and taking out another truck. So that's actually quite some decent damage there on Vivid. But he does have this bunker up. Has taken down the barracks now. One quad cannon there escapes. Now, the infantry shouldn't be able to get too much done here, I don't think. So wherever they run, they're going to run into a Tox Tunnel. I don't know if they can outrange it, actually. I think I think if you just use, like, two or three, you can outrange it. But if they bunch up a little bit, the Toxin Tunnel will turn around and kill them all. That minigunner for sure will go down. Decides to turn around and actually target the quads instead. I think Fargo can just leave that for a second, to be honest. And maybe come, come in a, a little bit later, maybe with the Toxin Tractor. Come in with the greater numbers, he should be able to clear that up a lot more easy. Vivid now wants to expand to his actual main supply, which he's not taken until now. It will be the equivalent of his third supply. Tunnel there, I think, gets cancelled. But did Vivid just place a supply that then also got cancelled by his own flame wall? Not quite sure. It looked like it, didn't it? Wasn't 100% paying attention to exactly what happened there, but I think he did. I think he might have cancelled his own supply. Might be wrong, might be wrong. Okay, a bit of an aggressive push here now from Fargo. Definitely applying the pressure. He's got this aggressive tunnel down here as well, although there is a bunker there. Opposition going to make their way forward, but there is a flamer there to counter it. What can actually move forward? Take out the flamer. Now the RPGs can come in once again. A big evac here from Vivid. Vivid now on his three supplies. Reloading back up his outposts. Fargo behind this. He's got the security of the oils in the corners, but he's not actually made some rebels yet. He's making a rebel now, but not got the capture upgrade. This bunker can go down with relative ease. It's a completely empty bunker. Vivid is focused on this left-hand side, and that flamer, weirdly, is actually going to survive. We think that would go down to a tox tunnel and a bunch of RPGs. But Vivid coming in with the pure DPS. Took down that tunnel. Fargo well and truly applying the pressure here. It looks like the War Factory as well as that supply will go down. 
Very, very nice. Fargo can just go back now, just leave a few RPGs here, here and there. And these outposts are going to struggle to get anything uh, done. I would like to see maybe another couple of tunnels dotted around for Fargo, because that supply is in danger for sure. Fargo is definitely keeping on the pressure. Here's a tech RPG with a worker loaded inside as well. Could find a truck here and get into some scrap. Could also drop off a worker here. Could try and find some dozers. Fargo's got all the options at the moment. And Vivid is more limited in the options. He's building a war factor over here on the left-hand side. That flame is going to make a push forward, but it's going to go down easy to that um, Tox Tunnel. Tech so RPG's trying to make something happen. He takes out these outposts. That is really, really good because it's these outposts that... that are the strong thing against the quads. But if it's just the blob of infantry moving around, it's obviously a lot slower. Technical now is going to get stuck, unfortunately. For Fargo, and does go down. So yeah, Vivid, I wouldn't say he's in the strongest position, but he's also not in the weakest position. He has got a Lotus out now, so he's about to get a lot stronger. Now getting the oils. Fargo also getting one of the oils at pretty much exactly the same time. Gatling cannon going to be established here. It's quite a nice position for a defense that, whether it's a bunker or a uh, Gatling cannon. I think there's a case for it being a bunker instead. Bunkers just build a lot faster and they're cheaper. But Gatling cannon obviously detects stealth. Kills infantry with ease. And be yeah, because of this little weird position, that supply is actually going to be quite safe. Fargo wants to capture an oil. He's still running around with a tech RPG. Is he going to go for the dozer hunt? Another TNT there for Fargo. Does take out the supply. Very, very nice. I suppose that's the benefit of the Gatling cannon is that we'll take out that technical very, very fast. Fargo's capturing and killing the oil. I think it's not a bad idea actually to capture and kill it if you've got the options to do both because that oil is no doubt going to be captured back by the infantry any, any second now. Now these ECMs are out with this big blob of uh, outposts as well. It's going to be a pretty hard defense there for Fargo. Even with the Tox, you want to get the, the Gamma upgrade as fast as possible. More RPGs, maybe a Jarman. Quads aren't quite going to cut it just yet. Against that. Uh, Vivid a little bit stuck there, actually, because that RPG. Fargo still applying the pressure back in the base. This good launcher is out now for Fargo. Very interesting game. There's yellow and green dotted everywhere. That supply's going to go down very quick. Both players are level... Oh, well, almost level 3. Pretty much exactly the same in terms of XP. Fargo's already making his CC. It's already 70% complete. That's going to be a scud hit and a half. Really decent. Just a shame. If it, if it was a demo scud, of course, that or a, or a regular GLA scud, that would have done immense damage because it's actually a GLA tox. Yeah, weirdly, you're against infantry, but weirdly, it does less damage to the, to the outposts. There's less damage to vehicles, but obviously that, that toxin remains for ages. Against infantry, it's strong. Okay, that oil has now finally been taken out. This RPG is still chilling here. <laughs> Fargo is on a two oil advantage, but Fargo never collected that, whereas Vivid has mined out that one. Vivid also collecting from there, whereas Fargo is. So if Fargo can get that one as well, he's massively ahead. I think a few more tunnels would be decent there, in, in, in quite a line. Yeah, with these scud launches. The defense is probably going to be pretty okay anyway, actually. Got terrorists in the mix. Angry mob in the mix. That terrorist, is it going to reach its target? Very close to reaching its target, actually. On our post there gets picked up. A little bit of a pickle situation here for uh, Vivid. Is he going to come out on top? It's looking kind of okay. Definitely if there was a few more tunnels there, though. If there was a line of, like, three tunnels, like, Excal style there, there was no way Vivid was breaking through that. But now Fargo has conceded this area. And one oil is going to fall into Vivid's hands. The scud launchers from this side, though, are going to be taking out these trucks. 
It's a very annoying situation there for Vivid. But he did get himself, obviously, this oil. Whereas Fargo's got the worker's shoes. We can see all the workers let in the $83. But these tunnels here, I said about five minutes ago, there needs to be more tunnels here, but Fargo not doing it. It's not like he's not got the cash rate because he's got 7.5k. Vivid's actually got 10k, so... John McKell is now out as well. Vivid does not have a very big base at all, really. But he does have the cash, though. Fargo also got the cash. Another decent army here pushing for Vivid on this left-hand side. Here comes the artillery. And probably going to be a carpet there for Vivid. I think it will come from here, and I think it will be on that oil. He's going to fire the artillery first, weirdly. See if it kills the oil, and if not, then he'll probably use the carpet on it as well. Unless he just can't afford the carpet right now. In terms of General's promotion. Yeah, maybe... Yeah, I think that's a mistake there from Vivid. I think level 1 artillery on the carpet would have been more beneficial, because then he would have definitely killed this area. But actually, maybe he wasn't Maybe he wasn't going for the kill on the oil. Maybe he was just going for the kill on the tunnel, and then he can capture it. So actually, that's in decent position. Actually, now he's killed it anyway. He's killed it anyway. Fargo has got a forward tunnel position here. Behind this, Fargo has got three markets. And no oils. Or his Vivid has got no hackers and one oil. Remember, the maths is that about two about two oils is the same as three markets. Another terrorist and another outpost kill. If you're trying to gain some ground here, but always running into these tox tunnels, always going to be a hard time against gamma tox tunnels. Nice pick off there for Fargo. It doesn't look like Fargo's getting any bounty money at all. I think he's gone for the pure ambush, which I probably have not seen. He's probably used it, but I just haven't seen it. Another push here from Vivid. Still running around, dodging the uh, Scud launcher bullets or missiles, rather. You need to be careful of that tower because eventually it will break through. Here comes a carpet bomb finally now from Vivid. Let's take down that tower. There's like 999 damage that, that tower when it falls over. Fargo is now getting the bounty money and stops a lot of this attack here for Vivid. I mean, Vivid has been killing some stuff. But also lost a lot of outposts. But yeah, his uh, ECM preservation has been pretty decent. Back at home, Vivid still collecting from here. He's got 12k left. He's not actually collecting again from here. I think it's definitely worth dropping the supply there in a bunker. Fargo's managed to get this all back for himself. Mig's now out, although they are running into quads. And that's four Mig's now gone down. So yeah, not worth it no matter what he hit. I think he's killed two, two Scud launchers, but is that worth it for four MiGs? I don't think so. Ideally, you want to be trying to kill him, trying to kill him for free. Or hit, hit the quads first. You might lose like one MiG and then come in later and kill the Scud launchers for free then. Ah. Definitely an interesting battle with the infantry against well, mainly against GLA but yeah even against Toxie if it's making it work isn't he he is indeed making it work Fargo does have the AP ammo that cord survives don't know how but it did survive it's gonna go and get the scrap this is quite a little bit stronger needs to move it back though because there's no point going to grab the scrap if you're just gonna waste the cord yeah definitely bad move there for Fargo should just kept it in the tunnel Fargo's got an outpost for himself. MiGs have not been remade here for Vivid. Both players float in like 8k. A 
The Fargo just needs to camp it out, really. He's got the markets. He's got an oil advantage. He's still not collected from here, though. Moving forwards, picking off some units. He's closer to level 5 than Fargo is, although Fargo does have a decent amount of XP too. But both players are level 4. Still moving around with his outpost army and is still proving difficult despite Fargo's army advantage. Mix come in, hit the angry mob. Jean Mankell is still alive, but it is going to get chased down. And the minigunners, I think, are going to get him. It's very close, though. Now Fargo is going to escape with the Jean in there. It's a good launcher from a distance. But rain down some missiles on top. And the infantry have mostly gone down. There's one outpost remaining. I don't know why he doesn't target that outpost with that. It's super low. If it had targeted it a few seconds earlier, that one would have guaranteed gone down. But now it's going to survive. Vivid needs to keep on the move here. Because he's about to take a scud launcher to the face. Is it going to get out of there? Ooh. Here comes an EMP, though, I feel, from Vivid. He's still floating 7k. I don't know quite how, but he is. Artillery is on the way again, but even if it hits one or two of the markets, I think there's the only positions it can hit is just one of the markets. But even if he does, it's still going to be a massive uh, economic advantage there for Fargo, especially when he's camping this oil as well. So I think Vivid needs to be spending more of his money, perhaps maybe floating a little bit too much over the last few minutes. Fargo now moving in. This outpost is still super low. You just need to one-tap it and that outpost is dead. ECMs are going to disable as much stuff as they can, but it's not going to make any much of a difference. Mix now coming in, but he still does not have the napalm, and that's a really awful mix strike once again there for Vivid, but I think he already knows it's GG. A little bit weird how he just kind of threw in the towel there, considering he'd been floating like 8k over the last few minutes. I think he could have given it maybe a bit of better try, maybe at least making one or two helixes, or making them MIGs, or making napalm or something behind it. I think he already kind of maybe knew he'd lost when he'd lost that last big ECM outpost army, and maybe then he just kind of gave up and didn't really bother trying from that point but yeah Fargo gets the win although Vivid did really well with the infantry there on Dralim Desert with the imbalanced situation there for um that Vivid had to fight an up uphill battle effectively didn't he so yeah GG well played let me know if you want in the comments and see you in the next one